that together. And bless the
my dear brothers and sisters. In the word of God, Jesus, the Lord says, Look at the white flowers. They do not spin or toil. But not even Solomon's clothes are as beautiful as them. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, today the Lord is asking us to surrender our lives to Him. Surrender all our cares, all our worries, all our burdens, all the things that we look forward to do. Let's just surrender them into the hands of the Lord. Because He is giving us the promise that He is going to take care of all of them. He's going to be there with us in all our endeavors, in all our, in all our troubles and in all, our, in all what we have to go through. Let's just surrender our lives and let's be free and let's praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 brothers and sisters as the Holy Spirit is moving powerful in this place 
Let's ask the intercession of our most blessed mother so the Spirit's power will be even more this evening. Hail Mary, full of grace, full of grace the, Lord the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Good evening, brothers and sisters. We'd like to welcome all of you for this evening's meeting. And the newcomers, could you all stand up, please? Anyone come for the first time? Yes, let's welcome them. There will be ushers who will give you all a green slip. You could fill it and drop it into one of the boxes. The Singhala and Tamil meeting will be held this Friday at 6.30 p.m. at St. Lawrence's Church Hall. Please pass the word around. A weekly English meeting is held at 10 a.m. every Tuesday at Sacred Heart Church, Rajagiriya. All are invited to attend this meeting. The youth meeting will not be conducted this week, so please note the youth, me youth will not be meeting this Saturday. Power 2018, registrations are now open. There will be a video clip also regarding the presentation. All youth are invited to join in, and we request all parents to send your sons and daughters between the ages of 14 and 30 for the International Youth Retreat in Chalakudi. The dates are from the 21st to the 29th of July. And you could call Tabo for additional information. The Professionals and Business Persons Ministry will be meeting this Friday from 6.30 p.m. at St. Anthony's Church Hall, Call Pity. All professionals, everyone working, and those who own their own businesses and enterprises are invited for this meeting of praise, message, and worship, followed by fellowship. Living Waters. This is, a minist this is for those who are struggling with addictions and also those who want to support those who are struggling with addictions. They will be meeting this Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. at St. Anthony's Church Hall, Call Pity. The ladies and gents will be ministered to separately, and we'll be also having a crush for the little ones during this time. The monthly service meeting for the month of May, that is on this coming Sunday, it will be held at St. Peter's College and not at St. Anthony's Church Hall. Uh, Reverend Father Anton Saman will be conducting a session on the Catholic view of angels and demons. This will be at tomorrow's service meeting, that's the 10th of May, at St. Anthony's Church Hall, Call Pity, at 6 p.m. And those who are attending are kindly requested to bring their Bibles and a notebook and pen. Praise the Lord.
Check, 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 check. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, uh, we are just after the fourth step retreat. Yeah. So, most of you were there during the retreat, and many who were at the retreat are here and not here as well. So, let's come together as we come before the Lord this evening and uh, get ready for the word. So, we'll invite the, the choir to join us as we come before him. And uh, just a reminder that uh, uh, one or two meetings are taking place this Saturday, there is a meeting taking place for the called the Living Waters Ministry. It's a unique ministry begun by people who were originally addicts of something or the other. And uh, they have uh, come together, been freed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and now they have a mission to people who are dealing with addictions not only people who are dealing with addictions even the the family members actually because family members go through crisis when someone in their family is struggling with a addiction so dealing with addiction dealing with the family members is being uh, done by uh, the living waters ministry you can see uh, you can uh, uh, what uh, saturday evening so Thursday, like that was announced, you know that uh, we are a group well within the realm of the Catholic Church. We are a member of the, of the late National Laity Commission of the Bishops' Conference. And not only that, we are a member of the Diocesan Laity Commission, plus the Bishops' Conference of Sri Lanka have given us two bishops to accompany us. So we have the Bishop of Gaul, uh, uh, his, uh, 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 who is that? Bishop Raymond Vikramasinghe, and then now the Bishop of Mana, uh, uh, Bishop Emmanuel Fernando, who was then the Auxiliary Bishop of uh, Colombo. So, because of that, our teachings are based on the Catholic teachings and based on the principles of. Catholic teachings. So once in a way, we get uh, theologians to come and share with us the thinking of the Catholic Church. So this Thursday, we have the teaching on demons and angels. Not Catholic demons and Catholic angels, but demons and angels. And the Catholic teaching on angels and demons, and is, I think, really valuable. Anyone interested? can actually join in service meeting that is at St. Anthony's uh, 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 church in Colpiti, the church hall upstairs. So you are welcome to join in. And just to remind you, the service meeting, that is we have but on a monthly basis, we have a service retreat or a morning a reflection. We'll be having it at St. Peter's all the servers who have given your names, if you can remember, you know, I'm sure you can remember that you gave your name, isn't it? So those who remember that they have given their names, you are invited. It is here in St. Peter's, not in this hall, but there's a hall, uh, a new hall upstairs, uh, air condition, uh, good hall, which we will be using from uh, morning, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock onwards. Those who like to be servers or find the deeper teachings, you are welcome to join us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, you can, you can oil your heart and your spirit. And one of the best ways of oiling your heart and spirit is to build a throne of praise and worship. What if your heart is low and your spirit has gone down? Go against it. Break through it. Lift your voice and heart in praise and worship 
to God. Shall we join in? We'll forget about who is next to us. We lift our voice. If you can, you can lift your hands and then we say, Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Praise you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Honor to you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Praise you, Father. We sing to you, Lord. Worship your name. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Worship your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Reckless means taking a decision or an action without really thinking about the consequences. And when we call God's love reckless, some people find it offensive. How can God's love be reckless? But in actual fact, he's taking a big risk. He is reaching into each and every one of us, each of us who has the freedom to reject Him. And there are many of us who reject His love. And He's taking a risk by reaching out to us. And that's what He did when He came to this earth as a human being. He took the risk of becoming a man, a human being, and becoming vulnerable on this planet so that people could actually relate to him and accept him and be loved by him and be blessed to have a transformed life. To reach these people, he also took the risk of being rejected, of being misunderstood, of being persecuted, of being dragged along the streets, of being whipped, of being made naked, of being crucified, reckless love. That's why we would call it reckless love. He could have easily loved people from heaven through the angels. He could have loved people by divine acts of power that would have shown people that he cared. But he took that ter ter terrible step of being a subject to the power and the, and the attack of an underdeveloped human race. A reckless love. He ran into that situation so that people could actually harm him, 
harm him they did but out of that reckless love comes the resurrection out of it comes the baptism of the holy spirit out of it comes the birth of the church out of it comes the salvation history of humanity out of it comes thousands of years of people finding new life in god his mysterious love that paid a price that every one of us could have a life of peace and joy and healing and happiness and blessing in our lives shall we give the lord a mighty hand Hallelujah. just open ourselves to this love maybe we have rejected it for many years walked in search of human love human pleasure human answers and because of that never taking his love seriously and today is a good day to just begin by opening ourselves to this beautiful love he loves me come as you are he said come as you are with your brokenness with your woundedness come i love you come as you are he says i love you give the truth that is in your heart i was struggling are you going through pain in your life give me that truth he says surrender your life to me he says you don't have to struggle on your own because with my love i'll come and live inside you and suddenly all what you need the strength the courage the power will flow from my heart into your heart and he says i'll fill you with the holy spirit the supernatural power of god the impossible power of god and suddenly the life 
door to miracles the supernatural power the answers that are divine and a breakthrough into our life will come rushing in to our hearts thank you father hallelujah shall we give the lord a mighty hand and worship you Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Vianga Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, as we as we come together this evening, uh, actually, uh, for those who have come here newly for, for the first time, that means we didn't ask people who have come here for the first time, isn't it? Didn't we ask? Were there people who are here? Those who came for the four-step retreat only first time, can you just lift your hand? Can you lift your hand? Up, uh, only for the four-step retreat, and now today you have come after that. Yes, there are about five or six. So we welcome you in the, you know, in the name of the risen Lord. So praise the Lord. <laughs> so as we come together. I just like to, uh, what I was thinking, you know, I have a message prepared. Those, you know, that we have a message that goes right through the country and in other countries during the week. We start it on Tuesday and then we uh, share it on Wednesday. Other speakers pick up this message and take it right through the island. And then on Friday, we preach the same message to uh, Australia and then to other countries like America, Canada, uh, England, Singapore. All the same message runs. And for one week, people actually live the made message starting on Tuesday. That's how people are sustained and we are continuing these prayer meetings for the over 30 years. So 30 years we are going on and we have many meetings in many places because it's sustained by the word of God that we receive every week. So this week what I thought was, uh, I'm not going to take the Tuesday meeting message which we preached yesterday, but I'm going to give you uh, the support. We call it the living the four steps. You know, you did the four step retreat, but doing the four step retreat is not enough. We are called to do something called living the four steps. You can actually live the four steps. And you can have victory in your personal life, and you can have victory over the issues of your life if you know how to live the four steps. So I'm going to teach it to you so that you can put this into practice in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So let's start. You can write down. I'm going to give it to you logically, closely, clearly, so that you can make use of it during your daily prayer life. Okay. So let's start. The first topic I want to talk to you about is called truth and higher truth. Truth and higher truth. What's our first topic? Truth. 
truth and higher truth. Not single or higher, but English higher, the higher truth. Right. Truth and higher truth. Now, many of us think that many things are true, isn't it? Till they are proven wrong. So that's the problem of life, isn't it? A lot of people think this is true till they are proven wrong. Let me give an example. I remember when we were small children, we had on the side of our house, we had a, on the other side of the road, there was a film hall, you know. So film hall means when we were children, you know, uh, and uh, people used to come to see Vesak, you know. We from distant villages, we lived in, in, uh, in uh, Badul, from distant villages, people used to come to see Vesak. So when people come to see Vesak, uh, till, the, uh, till they can go around and see these things, stuff, uh, these film halls show continuous films. So people go and watch. So I can still remember there was this uh, Perahara they were waiting, you know, the procession they were waiting for. In front of our house, the, the Perahara goes, you know. So people are now all collected and waiting for the Perahara to go past. Now I heard two people having a discussion, you know. I still remember, I would have been a small child, but I still remember the discussion that took place. One person is in wonder, you know. He's saying, I don't know how they are bringing these people onto that screen, you know. That is, what is that screen? The, the film theater screen. So the other one, of course, turns his nose up in sophisticated knowledge and says, you don't know? That is simple, no. So the other fellow asks, how? How does it happen? Very simple. How? He says, in singular, he says, mantra baling. <laughs> By the power of charms. So, so what that means is, each of us thinks of something we believe is true without knowing there may be a higher truth. Are you following what I'm saying? Now you can understand, isn't it? So one of those that we hold very dearly in our hearts, you know, what is that? That white is superior to black. Yeah. Everyone wants to be fair. <laughs> Isn't it? So have you asked, is there some kind of a scientific premise that white, the color, is superior to black? Is there some pigmentation, superiority, some scientific reality to that? No. Are you following what I'm saying? There is no scientific reality, but everyone believes that white is superior to black. So people like fair and lovely are making a lot of money by telling you six coats of fair and lovely will make you fair. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you see the, see the issue? The, have you ever thought why people think that white is superior to black? Have you ever thought about that? Very simple as far as I understand it. Very simple, what is the, what is the reason? Because for 500 years, India, Sri Lanka, we were ruled by white people, right? Portuguese, then Dutch, then England, N even now, economically, all the powerful nations are white. So therefore, we are looking up to them. And they tell us, we are actually superior to you. So one of the great examples is Tarzan, you know. Now, actually amazing, you know, when we were children, we were fascinated by Tarzan, you know. But only now I realized it's a white dream, you know, <laughs> given to black people. Why is that? Because Tarzan is the one white man 
who can save the blacks, unite the blacks, defend the blacks, look after the blacks. If they are left to themselves, they'll kill each other, they will die, they, other people will destroy them. Everyone needs a Tarsan. Have you followed? Can you understand what I'm saying? So because white is superior to black, it's a lie. It's a lie. But we live this lie. You know, I realized it, I was doing this program uh, for Unilever some years ago, and they have brought in some engineers from Africa, you know. And I brought this example out of the superiority of white. And you know, these engineers just didn't get it. <laughs> Why is that? In their culture, because they have not come been living under the rule of whites, <laughs> they, in their culture, black is beautiful. <laughs> and he says, what's the problem? Who says white is superior? Black is beautiful. So can you understand, everything we think is a truth, there may be a higher truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Something that we have lived with for, for centuries, now only it's been challenged. What is that? Men are superior to women. Yeah. We have, we have lived with centuries with that, isn't it? And if somebody said it's no, we would have been chased off, you know, and said even God is a man. That's why you call him he. <laughs> Can you see how it, how it is coming? Truths that we have accepted as true, which are subjective. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? So how do you know what the truth is? That's the problem, isn't it? That's the problem of life. But we have an answer to that. We Christians have an answer to that. Matthew 24, verse 35. Matthew 24, verse 35. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right. I'm going to say it, you're going to repeat it. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. You know, I can elaborate on this because we build a whole theme on this. When we talk to young people, when we go to schools, we start with dealing with reality. Why is that? Because young children have been given this idea that science is real. And that religion is unreal. It's not scientific, it's not logical, it's not true. And that's why many young people today, actually their faith is undermined by their education. And they, they believe that if you are intelligent, and if you are educated, you shouldn't be believing in God because it's illogical, there is no process, there is no argument, there is no logic. And that's something that's happened the world over and uh, it's undermined the whole system. But here, when we go to schools, when we go to pe young people, we start with this process. What is that? Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus says one thing will remain. What is that? The word of God. You can write it down. For us Christians, absolute truth is the word of God. Now, you know, I'm tempted to argue this uh, pre premise, you know. But if I argue it, I'm not able to do the follow-up because I have to go on another line. But just to, just to show you, you know, uh, uh, for me, I had a hard time believing that the word of God was true. 
above what I, un what I had learned from science, from physics, from, uh, from the knowledge I had gained in life, so many, so many books that people, that, that we read and understand, I found it very hard to think that God's word has, is superior to those. But only later with life that I realized, if I can't see the word of God as real, it is not the fault of God's word. It is actually, I have not grown to that place yet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I cannot understand the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, but simply because I can't understand the resurrection of Jesus Christ doesn't mean that he was not resurrected. What it means is my level of development cannot yet grasp the concept of the resurrection. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, we arrogantly assume that our knowledge base is enough. Like the guy with the mantra solution. He was arrogantly assuming that what he understood about films was absolutely true. And today there are people, Christians, theologians who say, Jesus Christ never rose from the dead. Why is that? Because they can't understand it. They can't explain it. It, it doesn't work it out into their logical process of thinking. And because they can't work it out, they say, therefore, it's not real. That's how science works. And what has happened is, through our education process, we have taken the scientific paradigm and put it inside. And based on that, we are trying to build faith. So based on that, we are trying to build a philosophy of Christianity. Telling people Jesus said these good things, Jesus said these bad things. The good and bad, we are also deciding from our own culture. We are saying in our culture, these things that Jesus said is good, those things are not too good. No, my brothers and sisters, it's very clear. The word of God says, if you can't understand what God's word says, trust him. He is more superior than you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Faith is simply that. So today I was talking to a person, actually. He's a doctor. He's a specialist. I know him for from some time. He said, I must come and talk to you. And he was sharing something that happened in this place, you know. He was asking me about words of knowledge, you know. And you can see as a doctor, uh, as a specialist, uh, they deal with this stuff. Uh, very difficult in their mind. Why is that? Because they have been built into this whole logical process, you know. But he's, then he said an amazing thing that happened to him, you know, uh, in 2011 in this hall, you know. And then he explained what took place. He said how his son, who was doing, uh, who was doing well, he was the number one prospect in his entire school, one of the top schools in Colombo. He walked by accident past a, a welding place where they were welding and a spark went in and he developed a headache that could not be stopped. His study stopped, his life stopped, everything stopped and for over 10 months they were completely helpless. Then they gave him treatment for it. The treatment bloated him up and he got mentally, went through pressure, and there was no answer to his problem. By accident, he just walked past, and it happened to him. And somebody persuaded them, come to this meeting. And he says, they came, nobody knew. He, his wife, and his son. And the first word that was spoken here was to a person suffering a headache. Can you imagine, you know, can see the connection. You don't know how it takes place. And just because you don't know it, people laugh it off. You know, assuming like the mantra, <laughs> they know all the answers. <laughs> and he says, next day he was going, actually he, he was working outstation, he was driving the car. They called him and said in the morning, he was going early morning, he had left to that uh, outstation place. They said, take the car off the road, you know, I, we want to tell you something. And then the son said, Daddy, the headache is gone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 There is no logic. There is no process. There is no understanding. There is a word from God. You believe it and suddenly you are blessed. And then he went on to the O levels and got all A's. You know, because he was completely touched and healed. So here, let me show you. Now, we have, I'm trying to break this base that all of us are having. What is that? That the, what the world is telling, what science is telling, what the news is telling, what CNN is telling, everyone. But of course, we know that the news here, what they're saying is not, uh, not really true, but, but <laughs> most often it's the opposite. That is true. So, <laughs> that we have figured out. But, but, but here, you would see that the real truth is the word of God. And just because you don't understand doesn't mean it's not true. It simply means we have not developed or grown to know that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 107 verse 13. It's a beautiful psalm. If you are in trouble, Psalm 107 is what you need to read, you know. A lot of people read Psalm 91, you know, and they are teaching God also Psalm 91. And do you know that even the devil can quote Psalm 91? Because in the, third, in the second temptation to Jesus, Psalm 91 was quoted. So nothing wrong with Psalm 91. You know, there is no mantra. You have to pray the Psalm 91 to yourself, actually. And allow your heart to be open to the word of God. And here it is. They, they, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. Actually, it's amazing. God will always give you a breakthrough. When you cry to God, he'll give you a breakthrough. And I'm, this is a secret we'll teach you into the future. All the fixing has to be done within us. You know, when you, when you put your heart right with God, when you confess your own sin, when you are right with God and you are humbled yourself and you cry to the Lord, He is surely going to answer you. Most of the time we are trying to fix other people, put them right, put that right, put the other right and nothing happens. God is not answering us because God says, let me deal with them. Vengeance is mine, He says. So you're wasting time trying to think about all the kind of terrible things that should happen to our enemies. You know? And we have very strong imaginations, isn't it? We can think of nice things to happen to our enemies. We are wasting time, you know. Repent. Bring your own sinfulness before God. And then you cry to God. God gives you a breakthrough. Shall we give the Lord a hand, my brothers and sisters? Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Look at the next Psalm, verse 14. He brought them out of the darkness and the deepest gloom. Doesn't it sound like depression? God can take anyone out of depression. He brought them out of the darkness and the deepest gloom and broke, their, broke away their chains. You can repeat that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you see? He can break the chains. What do you do? Focus on God. Focus on God. You know. And he can make a path where there is no path. So you can see. He can take you out of your depression. He can take you out of the darkest spot. When you fall into the dark spot, you think that you will never come out of it. Isn't that? That's really the problem of depression. You think you'll never come out of it. But he can simply take you out of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at the next verse. Let them give thanks to the Lord. You can repeat that. For his unfailing love and, wonderf and his wonderful deeds for men. So what is our job? We pray to God and give thanks. He will take you out of the pit. Look at the next verse. For he breaks down 
gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Isn't it beautiful? Some people have economic bars of iron, isn't it? They think, now my situation is finished. Bars of iron, gates of bronze, their businesses, their life, the doors have closed, their relationships are over, their marriages are smashed. My God, from now on it's over. But God is able to break those doors and cut through the bars. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Should we give the Lord a hand, my brothers and sisters? <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Actually, if you don't know the word of God, you don't know this power of God. All we know is we try and ask God, but we try and ask a politician as well. We try and ask somebody else as well. But we don't realize the power of God. Look at the next verse. Some became fools through their rebellious ways. Now that means, you know, you follow your own desires and you mess it up. That's, that's what it says here. Some became fools, you can say it again, through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. You know, what does that mean? That means some people followed their own desires and got messed up. Other people committed sin and got messed up. And most of our problems come from those two. <laughs> come from a broken nature that does unnecessary things and comes from committing sin. And then what happens? Look at verse 18. They loathe all food. You can repeat that. And drew near the gates of death. Looks like they have come to the fourth stage of cancer. You know. <laughs> they loathe all food and drew near the gates of death. The fourth stage of cancer. See what happens. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them from their distress. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brothers and sisters? <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now the question, you can write down the question. How did he save them? They cried to the Lord and he saved them. How did he save them? The answer is in verse 20. I built this whole thing up to bring you to verse 20. How does God answer your prayers? Here is the answer. He sent forth his word. You can repeat that. And heal them. Can you see? How does he heal? How does he solve your problem? He sends forth his word. He tells you how God sees it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now can you see, a lot of people cry to God, pray to God, and nothing happens. Because they're just crying. They're just praying. But their worldview and their perception, their self-perception and the perceptions of others remain of this world. Can you understand what I'm saying? So therefore we cry and cry and nothing actually happens. But here is the answer. He sent forth his word and healed them. How does he heal? First of all, the word of God tells you how God is looking at this problem. Second, he tells you what he can do through his word. What his promise is. And if you believe this word, if you convert to this word, if you stop thinking in the way that you have been thinking all your life and convert to this word, what does he do? He rescued them from the grave. You can say that. He rescued them from the grave. Shall we give the Lord a hand, my brothers and sisters? Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can you remember the 
the miracle that took place here maybe one and a half months ago, a lady who came from the Middle East and she came here because the doctors had said, said in, in the Middle East that the whole body, that cancer had traveled in her whole body through her bloodstream right through and she was on her way to Singapore and on the way they had stopped here and she came for the meeting. Can you remember how uh, there was the healing service here and there was a word and luckily for, that, for, for us that day I was not there. Why is that? Everyone wants to link words with people. This is not a word with people, it's a word with God. Somebody from here spoke the word and said a patient with suffering with this level of cancer is being healed. And what did they do? They believed in the word. You, realize, you have to know what God is thinking, then what do you do? You believe in that word, they went to Singapore, they did what you call the PET scan. And what happened? They found out that the cancer had completely left her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 In fact, that family came back and they testified here about the report. So, can you see now, healing, miracles, transformation, blessing, answers to the internal problems of our life come first from the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you don't know God's word, you don't know what he's thinking. You don't know what he's capable of. You don't know what he's doing in your situation. That's why we need God's word in our life. So today, to live the four steps, we need God's word. And one word we are going to use. So the topic is, you can write it down, be renewed on a daily basis. Be renewed on a daily basis. Actually, this journey is a journey on a daily basis. Not a weekly basis, not a monthly basis, not a yearly basis, on a daily basis basis. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For that, Ephesians 5.18. This is like the verse that changed my life. I've often quoted, but today I'm going to give it to you as the verse of renewal. Do not get drunk on wine. You can repeat that which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So, you can say, flesh and the Spirit. Do not be drunk with wine is flesh and the Spirit. Now, Every one of us, we are filled with one or the other thing in life. What is that? One or the other. One is, we can be filled with the flesh. What do you mean by the flesh? That is our old nature. Now the amazing thing is, you can pray to God, say your night prayers, everything and go to sleep. And you go to sleep an angel. But you know what? In the morning when you get up, somehow in the night sleep you have become a demon. <laughs> you are thinking without God, reacting without God, perceiving without God, naturally. Now I want to tell you very clearly. The word of God is giving us an answer. What is the answer? The word of God says, stop living in the flesh and be filled with the spirit God cannot do that for you God and nobody else can do that for you you have to 
choose to do it. So tonight I'm telling you, this is a way of life. What is the way of life? Emptying the flesh and being filled with the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we are filled with the Spirit, when we are filled with the flesh, it is like having a wound full of pus. I think at one time of our life or the other, we have had wounds, isn't it? That have become infected, isn't it? Those days they didn't have scientific methods of dressing wounds, isn't it? I remember almost every wound we got, got infected. <laughs> And then they had to remove the pus, clean it up, all kinds of things, and we didn't care anyway. Again, it's infected, you know. So, when a wound is infected, what do you feel? Do you feel good? No, what do you feel? You feel horrible, isn't it? That's why when you live in the flesh, the sign is dissatisfaction pain, suffering, sensitivity, you know, sensitivity means, you know, when you are wounded, sensitivity, I still remember a man got into a bus when, when, in which I was traveling, you know, he had a big wound on his leg, you know, a lady got in and she kept her foot close to the man, he, he didn't even touch the foot, he shouted, because he assumed the next step, she's going to step on his wound. Uh, isn't that why we fight with each other? <laughs> because we are living in the flesh, we have woundedness inside, we are oversensitive, and what happens? That oversensitivity causes exaggerated pain in life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you come to think of it, 24 hours of the day, we are having woundedness. Are you following what I'm saying? Because our nature is a wound, is of the flesh. Now, St. Paul is saying, don't be filled with the flesh, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So how do you do that? You have to know how to clean the wound and get the pus out. Now, anyone who has a wound clean knows that it's a painful process, isn't it? Why is that? When the wound is touched, it's sensitive, then it is painful, and we learn to avoid it as much as we can. But if when you start cleaning the wound, what happens? And filling it with medicine. You know what the medicine of the wound is? The word of God. You, you clean the wound with the blood of Jesus. And then you fill the wound with the medicine of the word of God. You know what happens? Quietly the woundedness of our life becomes healed. You can't imagine what's waiting for you. A life of peace, joy, love, and freedom you cannot imagine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We may have brought a woundedness from our childhood and from our ancestry, from this problem, that problem. My grandmother had anger tantrums and I'm also having anger tantrums. My, 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 my mother was having suspicions and now I'm also having suspicions. How many issues like that in families? Fears, re exaggerated reactions, wounded. Because we are filled with the wrong understandings of life by the flesh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what do you have to do? Clean it. How do you clean it? Wash by the blood. Through the four steps. Wash by the blood through the four steps. And then replace that flesh, that pus, with the word of God. 
little by little, when the wound is healed, we will be well. We sleep well, we eat well, we laugh well, we live well, we add peace within, and our life is blessed. And actually, we become a blessing for other people as well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a hand, my brothers and sisters? So, to the extent the wound is severe, you have to do the cleaning. You have to do the dressing. You can't say, my God, how many times to do it? We keep on doing it. That is to keep on returning to live in the Holy Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? Therefore, first one, how do you clean your wounds? First, you know, because it's painful, you have to put an anesthetic. You know, the anesthetic to the wounds of the flesh is step number one. What is step number one? Can you remember step number one? Come as you are, I love you. What do you do? First, you don't come and tell, Lord, I'm a sinner, I'm this, I'm that, you know, forgive me. No. First, we come to the great waiting love of God. This is the beauty of this whole journey. We come first to His love. In the in the analogy of the wound, it is the anesthetic that takes away the pain of transformation and healing. And first we say, come as you are, I love you. Now what we normally do is, here also we use the word of God, the medicine of the word of God. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. You know, a lot of people tell the word of God to God, you know, forgetting that it is God's word. No need of telling him. <laughs> he knows already. You know, you don't have to tell God his word. You have to put it inside your wound. You have to put it inside your festering place of life. And here is Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. We remind ourselves, we pray for it ourselves. Come to me. You can repeat that. All you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. So I tell myself, Jesus is inviting me into his presence. I come with my woundedness, failure and all. I still remember a person uh, who worked with us many years ago. We used to have our prayer meeting in, uh, in uh, St. Paul's Milagri. After the meeting, he came and he cried with me. So I asked, what's your problem? He said, you know, my wife and I, we had a fight, you know. And we were living in our in-laws' house, you know, my wife's house. And she really spoke nastily to me. And I got so angry, he said, and I hit her. Once I hit her, she said, I realized I did something terrible. I walked out of the house, he said. But I, he said, I was wondering where to go. Do I go to a bar, get myself drunk and go back to my old life? Or do I come to this prayer meeting I knew is going on? And I asked myself, he said, how can I come to the prayer meeting? I did the worst. I lost it. And I committed a sin. How can I come to the prayer meeting? And then he thought to himself, if I go to the bar, I'm going to walk away from this life that I've been struggling with and trying to pick up in my life. He said, I made a choice. I thought, even as a sinner, even as a defeated person, I'm coming to the feet of Jesus. 
Can you imagine my brothers and sisters? That's a struggle. That's the problem of our wounds. It pains. Alcohol also offers us an answer. But the answer of alcohol causes deeper problems. The side effects of the drug are worse than the drug itself. Another woman could give you an answer at that time. And that answer only destroys you and your life. But he made the right choice. What's the right choice? He came defeated, broken to the feet of Jesus. Even today, he continues to walk with us, with his entire family. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand? And we say, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because of Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, he says. All you who are weary and burdened. Weary because we are weary because we are going back to our addictive behavior. We are weary. We are going back to our temper. We are going back to our sadness. We are going back to our depression. We are going back to our sinfulness. We are going back to our addictions. Weary because of that. Oh God, when is it going to end? Some people addicted to pornography. They say we are helpless. We keep returning to it. Somebody told me. He says, I saw the website of the CRL coming on my, on my computer, but I didn't want to even look at it, he said. <laughs> but I went directly to the porn sites. Because we are weary, we are victims of our own brokenness. Weary and burden. What is, what's the burden? You know, Satan has a double job, you know. Do you know that Satan has a double job? First one is, his, his job is to tempt us. So he will bring us the dancers, the splats, the music, the beauty, the temptation. But after we fall, he has another job. You know what the job is? That is to accuse us. He's the accuser. Before God, Satan is the accuser. He will accuse us and say, you have no hope. You have no answer. You have fallen. You have no way back. And the word of God, which is the healing balm, the ointment to our wounds says, what does he say? Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And what will he say? I will give you rest. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brothers and sisters? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, here is how you start dressing the wound of the flesh. You bring it to Jesus that he can start dealing with your wound. Are you following what I'm saying? So here is the word. Here he says, come to me, don't worry, come to me. And there's a second word we always use when we are down. You can write that down as well. Actually, by hearting these verses are worthwhile. Romans 8.35. You're going to repeat what I'm saying. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Isn't that beautiful? Who shall separate us? You can say it again. From the love of Christ. And it goes on. It says, shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. My brothers and sisters, Jesus' love is certain. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel that Jesus cannot love me. For God's sake, get rid of your feelings. You are only a mortal. I am only a mortal. Our perceptions are limited. We live 70, 80 years and we die. 
God is eternal. His word is eternal. Humble yourself and accept his word. This is the beginning of deep internal conversion. The deep internal conversion starts when I'm converted into his word. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Isn't it beautiful? I'm returning. You know, remember the example I told you of that person. One day another guy calls me. You know. He says, Lalitanta, he says, tells me in Singhala. I'm seated in a bar, he says. I'm about to start drinking again and walking that path. Everything has gone wrong. Before I take the first drink, he says, I won't talk to you. <laughs> because I've been there, you know. I have a heart for these people who get drunk, you know. So I know what they, what they have. I said, okay, let's pray together. <laughs> he says, okay. And I start praying with him. He says, God is loving you. He's there with you, seated there, loving you, holding you in his arms. And he begins to cry, you know. And he walks away from the bar. And he begins to realize, you know, at least he sought the Lord in his desperate moment. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what I'm showing you is, it's not only good people who can seek the Lord. The worst sinner can seek him in their failure, in their brokenness, in their defeat. Come as you are, he says. Come as you are. I love you. You can make use of this text. Fight a battle within yourself by the word of God. What do you say? No, it is the promise of Jesus. Jesus has told me to come. I'm coming. Jesus can't love you, the accuser says. Jesus will never accept you. You are a worse sinner. How can he love you? He who fell yesterday also. That's what, that's, my, that's what my heart says. But I tell my heart, the word of God, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you see? And we keep returning to the Lord. If you ask me, what is the spirituality of the CRL? It's simply returning to God. We are not great people, good people, holy people, great news people. We are nothing, but we keep returning to God. And then when you return, the second step starts. You have to clean the wound. <laughs> okay. And the second step is, can you tell me what the second step is? Give the truth of your heart to Jesus. Don't keep it inside, it will destroy you. If you keep pus inside, it will destroy you. And you know what happens with pus normally? Pus is inside, a nice boru skin grows over the pus. Isn't it? And you don't want to break it. Ooh, don't drink, don't come close. Because it's going to cause pain. Second step will always cause pain. It's the cleaning of the wound. And how do you do that? You tell Jesus the bitter truth. Lord, I fail once again. Lord, I got back into my nature once again. Lord, I dealt with this issue in a wrong way once again. I give you the truth. I have no excuse. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't it beautiful? You can come to God and say, Lord, I have no excuse. But still you can come. Isn't it beautiful? Still you can come. Ephesians verse, chapter 1, verse 7. Here is the medicine you use to clean the wound. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Can you see? When you use the blood and you call on the blood, that blood will clean the wounds of your flesh. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not depending on my character and strength to be remain holy and faithful to God. I'm calling on the blood of Christ on the, on the cross. And I'm saying, Lord, clean the wound of my flesh with your precious blood. And then when the wound is clean by the blood of Christ, the pain starts lessening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you following step by little step I'm teaching you? So what do you do? Now that you have cleaned your wound, don't keep it open. If you keep it open, what will happen? It will fester. You have to put in medicine. Step three. What is step three? Can you tell me? Surrender your life to Jesus. Invite him. He is your medicine. Invite him in. Look at Romans 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. Actually, those who are writing down, you can write it. And also those who haven't, I'm suggesting, you know, get the CD, the DVD, and take it home and pray with it. Because that's an answer. A lot of people say, you know, put in the papers, you pray this ten times, then you will get this. And people are praying it, you know. And you think it's like magic, you know. But I'm telling you, if you use this continuously in the right way, it will bring you a life of peace, joy, and happiness that you can't imagine. And this is not a magic. This is not a mantra. This is no secret. This is the method of the Word of God. So step number three. Therefore, I urge you, you can repeat that. Brothers and sisters, St. Paul didn't like to say that, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. What do you do? Offer your body. Jesus, come and fill my heart with your presence. The greatest answer to my woundedness is that the healer himself is coming to live inside of me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Holy and pleasing to God. You can repeat that. Holy means belonging to God. Holy, I have, now with my life is dedicated to you. It's holy, it belongs to you. Holy and pleasing to God. Pleasing to God means God is happy with my sacrifice. This is, you can repeat that. Your, this is your spiritual act of worship. Can you see? How do you do a spiritual act of worship? You Offer your heart as the dwelling place for Jesus. Can you imagine? We are getting an antibiotic directly inside the wound, you know. And what is that antibiotic? The most powerful healing substance of the world. And what is that? Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, is willing to come and live inside us and fix us from inside so that sadness and addiction and darkness and bondage and, and unhappiness and, and destruction are taken away and love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, fruitfulness fills our hearts. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brothers and sisters? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the mystery that you reveal to us. The mystery of our inner journey. We thank you, Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? And here is the promise. John 14, verse 18. If you want to get confirmed, here it is. John 14, verse 18. I will not leave you as often. So you can repeat that. I will come to you. 
Can you see? Jesus says, I'll come back to you. I'll come to you. Verse 19. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. Well, who, I have no time to explain, but the world means the scientific mind won't see it, the logical mind won't see it, the philosophical mind won't see it, the most intelligent people in the world won't see it. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brothers and sisters? <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you see? He's promising. He's not just promising solutions. He's not saying, you know, I'll deal with your Kalukada Mundalali, I'll deal with that politician, I'll deal with your financial issue. I'll... No, he's saying, I'll deal with your internal life itself. And I'll give you a kind of life that's only available in heaven. And how does he do that? He says, I will come and live inside of you. And that's the Holy Eucharist. Every day we take the Holy Eucharist. But we never register. Last verse is verse 20. If you look at verse 20. On that day, when you are doing the cleanup, on that day, you will realize, realize means it will drop in. You will realize, you can say that, that I am in my Father, and you are in me. And, what is that? I am in you. Say it again. Who is that? Jesus living inside the wounded person. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All the antibiotics you ever need, all the healing proportions you ever need, all the answers to every problem of our life, Jesus alive or living inside of us. And then the fourth step. He will do the fourth step for us as well. What is that? What is the fourth step? He will fill us with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every mind we return in, He will do this to us. Because in the flesh we have a tendency to keep returning to the flesh. That's our habitual life for the last so many years. Don't expect to come out of it immediately. But we keep returning. John 14 verse 16. It's so beautiful. He says, you know, I'll put a protective mesh around you, you know. Your wound is too sensitive. I'm going to handle it in a different way, he says. And I will ask the Father, you can repeat that. And he will give you another counselor. Why did he say another counselor? Jesus is also there. Another counselor, you can say. To be with you forever. You can see verse 17. The Spirit of Truth. Who is the Spirit of Truth? The Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept Him. Because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. If you go by logic and science and understanding and intelligence and, and trusting in your own wisdom, you enter into blindness. The world will not see Him. Nor know Him. But you know Him. You can repeat that. For he lives with you. And, and he will be in you. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand, my brothers and sisters? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 You know, here is the answer to growing into the victorious life of God. Here is the answer. But like any wound, like any serious sickness, you need intensive care at the start. And that's exactly what happens, intensive care. You have to keep returning to God. When I started, I had to return every five minutes because I was living in the flesh. So I thought I was the worst sinner around. But all I knew was I had no answer outside God. I kept returning, 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 returning. 
And as time went by, I learned to rest in this revelation. And then peace comes in, joy comes in, love comes in, and then you enjoy being in the spirit. You don't want the flesh anymore. You don't want to live in the flesh anymore. And then you start receiving revelation from God. You see miracles taking place. And then you realize this is a much better life than the flesh. Your eyes are open. Let me finish. Yesterday in the, in the sermon I gave at Maboli, I gave them a, 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 a description which I thought will be valuable here. You know, the, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, many years ago, I worked in the CTB, you know, and I used to work in the head office here. And uh, because I worked in the CTB, uh, buses were free, you know. My parents lived in Badulla. Every Friday, I used to get into a bus and go to Badulla. And every Sunday at night, uh, I used to come back from uh, Badulla. Now, when you go to Badulla, the road to Badulla is from uh, Beragala. There's a place called Beragala. And then you get Haputale. You know, you have something called the Haputale Pass, you know. When you go on the Haputale Road, on a clear day, you can see right down to the coast, to the to the to down the head, to Kataragama. The you can see the uh, the rivers, the lakes, the tanks, the whole spread of the land. Recently, we went to Badulla to do a retreat. It was seven o'clock in the morning when we stopped there. For, you know, I said stop, stop at a vantage point. I took the camera and we took a shot. You know amazing what you can see but there are days when there is mist and you can't see beyond the stone in front of you a person who comes on that Habutale pass for the first time in the mist you know what they will think this is the most boring road you can ever find why is that nothing to see only mist only stones only tea bushes here and there that's all you can see because of the mist that is we christians who live in the flesh and occasionally come to meetings and occasionally pray praise the lord Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, when you occasionally do that, it's like groping in the mist. The beauty, the majesty, the greatness of the life of God, we are blind to. We have lost it. We don't, we don't, even, we are, don't even desire it because we are caught up in this little misty world. And you know, there are days when the moon is not out. When there are no stars, when there are clouds above, and the bus is coming down the pass in the night, you can see absolutely nothing. And you know, I'm thinking that those are the people who have fallen into sin, who have fallen into big sin. When you fall into mortal sin, what happens is you lose your perception of God. You live in darkness. You can't even pierce the darkness. You can't imagine there is a happiness outside the flesh. You can't imagine that there is joy outside drinking and boozing and womanizing and running around. That there is happiness outside eating. That there is nothing ex except money. They are only caught up in the darkness. But when you enter the spirit and the dawn appears, you see the majesty and the fullness of the life that God has for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our prayer for you is, let's journey with him morning after morning till the dawn rises over our life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we give the Lord a mighty hand? And we say, thank you, Lord.
just look at the lord my brothers and sisters look at him it's it's really no secret why he was called the light of the world he is the light of the world he when his light shines the true beauty of a god life with god the true peace the true joy the true revelation is received into our hearts it's is actually the beauty of god is revealed by jesus the light of the world look at him tonight look at him tonight he is bringing that light into the darkness of our flesh the mist of our own struggle within ourselves caught up in the world and the flesh and into our darkness the darkness of a sinful life an addicted life a broken life caught up in the things of this world he is come to reveal this truth to us so shall we look at him tonight and welcome him forget who is next to you lift your voice and say thank you lord hallelujah 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 praise you father glory to your name worship you jesus worship you hallelujah 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 worship you lord hallelujah 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 worship you father bless you lord glory to your name hallelujah hallelujah thank you father bless you lord glory to your name we welcome you lord hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your name, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Oh 
say it again. So live out your Just look at him this evening. Look at him. Extend your right hand to the blessed sacrament. Connect to him. His love is unconditional. It's a reckless love. A love that loves us even when we don't have anything that is worthwhile or deserves to be loved. A love that reaches out to us even when we have no worth or value. Because the Lord has a dream for each one of us when he sent us to this earth. He saw what we could be. He saw what could be done in our lives. He saw what he can do through us in the world. In his heart, that dream is a life. And when he looks at us, not only does he see our brokenness, our life of the flesh, our defeat, the darkness of sin, or the mist of a confused life, but he sees what is possible in the light of his presence, the full potential of our life. And he calls each of us, come as you are. Come, come to me. Let me release that light into your heart. So you can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come with my sinfulness. With the darkness of my heart. I come to you the light Lord Jesus I come with the confusion and the fog and the mist of my mind Lord Jesus I bring my flesh where for moments I see you I see your love but I lose you in the mist of the of the flesh
the midst of the flesh. Lord Jesus, I bring that truth and I place it at your feet tonight. Lord Jesus, let your love enfold me. Let your power hold me and set me free from the darkness from the mist into your perfect light thank you lord hallelujah 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 worship you lord hallelujah 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 Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Glory to your name. Worship you, Father. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 It's hope for the hopeless and all those who stray. Come sit at the table. Come take the grace is rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can't 
struggle with self worth and feel that they live their their life is not worth living any longer the lord is telling you what you are experiencing right now is the touch of my love if you allow me to come into your life and you walk with me through the four steps i will reveal your worth and value and turn your life into a blessing not only for you but for the whole world says the lord thank hallelujah. you father hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. thank you jesus lord is showing me a mother who's worried about the sick child this child is getting sick on and off it's about 6 years that this child has been getting treatment there is no cure lord is telling you i love you i have touched your child and heal trust me says the lord thank hallelujah. you lord. Hallelujah. 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 hallelujah 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 thank you jesus lord is showing me a person who's angry with the spouse and really disappointed and thinking many times this has happened and i want to give up the lord is telling you hold on i have changed the situation i will help you and don't separate says the lord hallelujah thank you lord praise hallelujah. you father. thank you Glory jesus you. hallelujah hallelujah there's a person who has a problem with the bladder for the last three and a half years you have been suffering the lord says today i have heard your prayer and you will never have this problem says the lord thank you father. hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 There's a person who has a cyst and you're wondering whether it's cancerous. The Lord says, "Do not worry. In 2 days it will disappear," says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to you. The Lord is speaking to a person who is trying to do many things in life but keeps on failing, and this person feels valueless. The Lord says, "My child, come to me, and I will bless your life," says the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. The Lord is showing a person who is having a problem in the cornea of their eye and thinking whether this person will get become blind but the Lord says do not worry my child I will heal you and the doctors will come from this healing says Thank the Lord Thank you Father Thank you, Hallelujah Hallelujah The Lord is showing a person who has to shift houses and not knowing what steps to be taken the Lord says I will open a mighty door for you says the Lord. Thank you Lord. Praise you Father. Hallelujah. I confirm the word about the person who has a problem with the eye and this person actually gets uh, like it's red spots constantly that they feel there's something really bad uh, and the Lord says today as a mark of my love I'm completely healing you. Hallelujah. Thank you Father. Hallelujah. The Lord Hallelujah. is also speaking Hallelujah. to a family where the roof uh, there's a terrible leak in the from the roof within during these rainy days and they are so helpless and the Lord says I'm your provider and I will provide a way for this roof to be repaired but I want your family to come journey and trust in me. Thank, Thank you Lord. Jesus. Praise you Father. Glory to you. The Lord is speaking to a person who's struggling with his education. He feels burdened down by the weight of this education, but the Lord says, "Leave that burden at my feet, and I will open doors for you." Says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Jesus. Glory to you. The Lord is speaking to a person who is having a terrible skin rash, and he is very worried about this. But the Lord says, "Tonight, as a mark of my love, I have touched and healed you. Come and testify." You, says the Lord. Praise you, Thank Father. You. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to several people here who are who is struggling with uh, the opinion of other people. You are so caged and you are trapped because you are so 
worried about what people think about you and what they say about you the lord is saying there is freedom in this place today and i am breaking this bondage over your life where you ha- your every move is dictated by what other people will say or think thank says you, the lord hallelujah. hallelujah praise you praise lord you, thank you jesus you. the lord is speaking to someone who recently discovered blood in their urine and you're very afraid and you're in a lot of pain the lord is touching and healing you says the lord thank you lord praise you father hallelujah given them bread from heaven heaven in its fall to life let us pray o god who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion grant us we pray so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign forever and ever
Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Shall we all stand, my brothers and sisters, and for a moment we'll pause before the Lord. And just to remind you, on Thursday evening, there is this talk on demons and angels at St. Anthony's uh, uh, Colpity Church Hall. And then on Sunday, we have the service morning reflection on at, at St. Peter's in the, on the top floor hall. Those who like to be servers and serve, you are welcome to join in. That is Sunday at 10 o'clock. Thursday, there will be meeting will be at 6 o'clock in the evening, 6 to 8.30. Yes. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, if there's anyone who wishes to give a testimony of their experiences from the four-step retreat this weekend, how the Lord really touched your heart, and also if you have a specific experience, could you please come up and tell us about your experience for the glory of God and also really to see what the Lord has done at that four-step retreat. Praise you, Father. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This brother is claiming the word uh, that was given about uh, someone who is looking for a house and that the Lord says, do not be troubled. I will provide a house for you within a short while from now. So he's claiming that word because he's looking for a place for him to move into. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word that comforts us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise the Lord. This sister wants to claim two words of knowledge for herself. One is a word that was given about a person who's looking for self-worth and also someone who's living under the opinion of others. She says that this is something that she really wants to get rid of tonight and she believes that God has really set her free of this. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. The sister wants to claim the word of knowledge about a person who's shifting houses. She says that she has been living with a lot of fear because she's have, she and her husband has to shift houses and move to an apartment with her son, but it created a lot of fear in her heart. But she decided to surrender it at the feet of God. And just like that, the word spoke directly to her heart, and she wants to hold on to it tightly and believe that God is going to see them through. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you. You know, Miraj is trying to go. Every document was given. Praise the Lord. The sister says that today, throughout the whole meeting, the entire message and all the worship hymns spoke directly to her heart and to their family, a situation that they're going through, where they were losing hope and were not wondering what to do, but God spoke directly to their hearts today and said that He will carry them through. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The sister wants to claim the word of knowledge about a person seeking a house. She wants to claim it for two people that she knows uh, who are also poor, and she claims this word for them tonight. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise the Lord. The sister also wants to claim the word of knowledge that was given about a person who has uh, small white patches on the leg. She wants to claim it for herself and believes that God has healed her tonight of this completely. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This sister wants to give a testimony of what God has done in her life. She says that after she got married, she conceived and she had a miscarriage, but then uh, God spoke to her directly and said to not fear. And as she was holding on to this word, she conceived again within three months, and the baby she's holding in her hands is the baby that God promised, and she wants to thank and praise God for this miracle in her life. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. The sister is claiming two words of knowledge for another person. One is about the word that was given about a person who feels burdened with too much of knowledge and qualifications because he's applying for an because he's applying for another job and this is really uh, making him frustrated. But uh, she wants to claim this word of knowledge for him and believes that God will really lift this burden from his heart. And also the word of knowledge about a person who is moving houses. She wants to claim this word as well for him. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. This brother wants to claim the word of knowledge that was given about the self-worth. He says at work that he was feeling very low and demotivated at work because of this uh, self-worth that he was not able to get. But today God spoke directly to his heart and said that the word that he's looking for, God is going to fill his heart with that love that he's looking for. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 